Hello there. Welcome to this history, government, and politics, and geography also. Q&A. You provide the Q. I'll try to give you the A. <laughs> you know what I mean? Question and answer. Um, people have asked me over the last couple of years, why you don't do any history, government, politics videos anymore? I said, well, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's just that um covered a lot of stuff and I couldn't really think of anything. I'm not just going to do it just to be doing it. So I thought it would be good to have an open forum and uh, try to be on give honest answers, good answers. And um, like I say, to the best of my knowledge, now they're doing a live hangout over there on Kent Beer Reviews. Those jolly good, jolly good fellas on Kent Beer Reviews, if you want to watch that. I met those guys five years ago. And I was going to watch a bunch of video reviews. I, I was listening to them all day for hours while I was watching the baseball game. And um, I was like, I can't stand to listen to another review. And then I got all these beer reviews for Bush Apple Ale Save because I somebody sent me a can. And it's going to take forever to watch those. And then somebody sent me a can of Ryan Geist, Ryan Geist, Cheetah. There's not too many videos for that reviews for that so that won't take too long but all these other backlogs i've got ooh, I, said, I can't stand listening anymore for now baseball games coming up in an hour and well i guess it won't start for an hour and 13 minutes 14 minutes but uh you know so anyway uh but i'd like to i'd like to settle down and watch that tomorrow night they're doing multi-monday Tonight, I think around 7 Eastern or it could be 6 Eastern. I can't remember because I never join because I have to work. I don't like to join anything when I got to work the next day. It keeps me up, gets me jumpy, can't go to sleep. But they're doing dark beers after dark, any dark beer. They don't care what it is. And they kind of jovial and talk about anything, you know, crazy. But um, this is, uh, like I say, Q&A. You provide the question. I'll try to provide the answer. History, government, politics, any topic. I don't run from any topics. So that's for sure. Only below 30% by volume, it will freeze. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about. In quarantine for two weeks because of one person. Oh, sound like a very bad drag, like a drag. Have you ever heard of Summit Brewing Company out of Minnesota, Mike L? No? Well, there's the first question. Have I heard of Summit Brewing? No, I haven't. I've been to Summit, Mississippi. Uh, which was nice, I suppose. Um, so anything, history, government, politics. I'm drinking Lagun Lagunitas Maximus Colossal IPA, 9% alcohol. Like I say, if you want to go watch a British uh, hangout, can't be reviews. And those jolly good fellows are doing a hangout right now. Um, I don't know what they're talking about. Like I said, I met those guys five years ago. Have you ever heard of... Oh, so anyway, if you can think of any history, government, or politics issue and do a QA, and a I'll try to answer it, or any geography. This Lagunitas Col Maximus Colossal IPA is Dino Mite. And it's 9.49 a six pack, let me tell you. This year's the 150th anniversary of the establishment of the German Empire. Pretty interesting topic. 150th anniversary is kind of a flim flam anniversary, you know. It's got that name that nobody can pronounce. <laughs> um, bicentennial, that's easy to pronounce. 200 years, centennial, 100 years, you know what I mean? And 50th anniversaries are always interesting. John Miles says, good to see you, Ron. Good to see you. Um, I don't know who you are, but um, I'm good to see all the viewers. Um, I mean, I recognize some of the names, Daniel and whatnot, but I don't, well, of course, I don't know the people. It'd be like flipping through the phone book and saying, Look at all my friends. We well, don't know the people, you know. You don't know, you don't know them. But we try to be nice to everybody. So, uh,
We can look at the German Empire, 150th anniversary. The Second Reich. Reich, R-E-I-C-H, meaning empire nation. I guess that's the best translation to English, empire nation. So we will look at try to get a good map of it. Oh, that's who you are, BX, uh, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Uh, I didn't see you on Facebook, and I wanted to tell you thank you. Uh, I got this huge box yesterday, and I was like, the box doesn't have any weight. It was strange. It was big, but it was no weight. Couldn't understand it. So I sliced it open, you know, and I got. I said, oh, two beers. I read your letter. It was a wonderful letter, and I made the videos already. It's going to take a while to post them because I'm so backlogged, Ben, in Ohio. But... Uh, I had a little accident. I was cut because you really packed them tight. And I was cutting open the Rheingeist cheetah and the knife went, the razor, and it nicked the can. So I'm like losing my mind, you know, <laughs> the beer is squirting out. I said, oh, my golly. But you had those baggies, you know, the zip lock. So I put it in there and I zipped it up. That's good. I put it in the freezer. And I knew I uh, nicked it high on the can, so I knew it would go down to a certain level and stop. So I went and did some other things for a couple of hours. And it alleviated, and then uh, there was a, at least 70% of the beer left, so I opened the can by the top, and I poured it, and I was able to do a decent review. I mean, I, was, I felt terrible, you know, because I say, I tell people, I tell people, don't send me beer, please. It's a big trouble and it's a lot of expense but they do it anyway sometimes and i, I said now look I, I nicked the can with the razor <laughs> and it's spilling everywhere but i was able to save it and i did the review and it was really nice i really like that um cheetah i don't really know why people craft beer companies want to make a a, a, a beer that tastes like budweiser i thought craft beer was to make stuff different from that but uh well it's fine though you know and then the bud, the bud, the bush light, the, the, the little, the bush light apple was really nice. And I did a review for that. And uh, you'll like, I think you'll like the video. And um, now I got to watch all the bush light videos for everybody else. I'm more of a viewer than a content producer, really. People say, you make a lot of videos, you do beer reviews. I do that. Uh, it's true, but I'm more of a viewer than a producer, actually. I'm just a, uh, I'm a YouTube review viewer. You know, I watch people's reviews that happens to make his own videos. People are scared to talk politics against the narrative these days, scary times. I'm not scared, but I understand the feeling. Uh, I live right next to Budweiser Brewery in Los Angeles. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Have you ever experienced alcohol withdrawals? Well, no, because I'm not really a heavy, drink, a heavy drinker, so I mean... I mean, naturally, you'll crave something like, oh, I'd like to have another drink. But you say, oh, now I'll just wait till tomorrow, which is what I do. And it's no big deal. You know. Uh, but I mean, I have you could you could say that for cheese. Like I saw this cheese in the fridge, this uh, Irish cheese. Uh, can't remember the name of it. Um, what's the name of that stuff? Y'all know the name of it. Kerrygold. 
I was like, boss, you would like to have that cheese. But I said, well, no, I ate enough already. Enough uh, pizza already, so there's a craving. Well, not withdrawals. I wasn't like shaking and say, oh, I got to have this cheese. You know, Go Cardinals. Go White Sox. Go White Sox. All right. So now. Hang on my brush. That's not the correct. That's not the correct map. All right, so good evening to you, BC. So nobody's got any questions, so I'll give you some answers. We'll talk about the 150th anniversary of the German Empire. So now first we go to the German Confederation, because that's the roots of it. Really, the roots is that Kiligus Romix got right, but can't get too detailed. So we'll do a screenshot. Daniel, the one in Northridge. Oh, thanks, B Aviation. I'm sorry. Go to church. Go to mass. I'm not saying that as a joke or a flip answer. I went to church this morning at 730. Yes, I like tequila, but I'm not much of a drinker. I've done some reviews and I've enjoyed them. Okay, I'm like everybody else, impatient. You know, I'm impatient, selfish and everything. And I'm at mass like, oh, I hope it doesn't go too long. I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat, you know. Uh, you know, your mind be spinning and stuff. Uh, so, um, but I mean, I go to church every week. And I think everybody should. And if you did, you'd feel a lot better. I'll tell you, you'd feel a lot better. Do you think the Commonwealth countries will become fully independent after the Queen dies? No. Do you agree with the death penalty? Uh, well, depends how I'm feeling. I agree with it. I don't think it's immoral. I am Catholic, though. All right, so let's go to this. Um, screen share. So here we're looking at the Der Deutsche Bund. I can't speak German. The Deutsche Bund. The German Confederation. Bund is like the Union, German Union. Can y'all see that? I don't know why there's all this white space here. Um, so after the Emperor Napoleon was defeated in 1815, finally at the Battle of Waterloo over there in Belgium, they set up this thing called the German Confederation. They're not going to bring back the Holy Roman Empire because they figured that's dead in the water. Okay. I can't answer all of these. Okay. Now, so uh, yeah, I, I can only answer one question. At a time. So here we go. They set up the allies, meaning Russia, Great Britain, or the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, Royalist France, Bourbon France, Austria, and Prussia. Here's Prussia, Prussian. This dark blue here, that's Prussia. That's the kingdom of Prussia. And plus this lighter blue outside of the German Confederation in Austria Kaiserreich Österreich that means the emperor empire of the Eastern Reich Austria Österreich that means Eastern Reich Austrian Eastern Eastern Europe as they saw it this is Austria here where I'm showing see what this cursor is that's Austria that's Bohemia, and that's Moravia, but it was part of the Grand Duchy of Austria, 
and the Grand Duchy of Austria set up their own empire, most of which was here, Ungarn, that's Hungary, east and down there, Slovenia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, and so on. And Galicia here, Galicia, Galicia, Galicia here, which is part of Ukraine today. Okay, but anyway, so they set up this union of German states, and that's what it looked like. You know, we have the United States of America. They had the German Confederation, Der Deutschbund, the German Confederation. All right, so the leading countries were the, the and the red line is the boundary of it. See that red line? That's the boundary of it. Switzerland was not part of it. All right, so that's your red line. It's a dead smack in this in Central Europe. You go from Germany here, and what's south? The Italian states, which were totally not united at all. Okay, but that's another story. So then you got the big states. Konik Reich Prussian. Prussian. That means the Kingdom of Prussia, which stretched from Lithuania or Russia at the time, east, it's so big it won't even fit on the map, west to France. There's the French border. All right. The other big country was Kaiserreich Osterreich. That means Austrian Empire. All in that uh, orange, gold. Outside of the German Confederation, Austria ruled Venice and Lombardy which is now part of Italy today, all right? See that? And they also ruled Hungary and the other countries I've described. There's the kingdom of Poland, which was Zu Kaiserreich Russland. That means what? To the Russian empire. So that belonged to the Russian empire, all right? 1848 to 1851, zum Deutsche Bund, okay. That was only for uh, only for three years. Did they had a revolution? We're not gonna go into all of that. Other big states was Saxon Saxony here, Königreich Bayern, Bavaria, the Kingdom of Bavaria here in that light green. Also, they ruled that area there on the French border. So Bavaria here, capital is you know, you know what the capital is, um, Munich, München, and there's the East, the western part of Bavaria. Then you've got Hanover here. That squiggly thing. Cut into one, two, three pieces. Mm. The ruler of Hanover, the king of Hanover was also the king of England. All right, by inheritance. So the King of England in 1815 was George the Third, then George the Fourth, then William the Fourth. All right, it wasn't the same country. England itself did not rule Hanover. The English government had no control over Hanover whatsoever. But George the Third, and then George the Fourth, and William the Third. Uh, I'm sorry, the Fourth ruled Hanover directly by their own personal rule, you understand, their own personal ability. So they were the king of two different countries at the same time, is what I'm saying. But there was a problem. When William IV died, Victoria inherited the throne of England, but there was a law in Hanover that women could not rule. They did not allow women to rule. So it went to the next closest relative, so she lost control of this. And then it was totally disconnected from Great Britain after 1837, okay? So there was no war or anything. It was just the law. So that would ha that's what happened. So then we got Oldenburg, you see, Hessen, Baden, 
Nassau, and then all these tiny little states. Look at all these little states. They're so small, they make Rhode Island look big. Mecklenburg Square is probably about the size of Rhode Island. Holstein. Now, Holstein here in green was ruled by the Kingdom of Denmark. The King of Denmark ruled Holstein. So that man there ruled that state in Germany, inside of Germany. It wasn't part of Denmark. It's the same situation with Hanover. It was a German state that happened to be ruled by the King of Denmark. Here is Luxembourg, which used to be twice the size. Look how big Luxembourg used to be. It was ruled by the King of the Netherlands. It was not part of the Netherlands. It was part of the German Bund. It was a German state that happened to be ruled by a neighboring country. No, I'm saying that wrong. Not a neighboring country, a neighboring king. The king of the Netherlands was also the ruler of Luxembourg, okay? And then there's some other Dutch territory that um, was later given over to the Netherlands and taken away from the, um, the uh, 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 German Confederation. Belgium broke away from the Netherlands in 1830. See, so it says Conic Reich, Kingdom of Belgium, Belgian. They broke away from the Netherlands in a civil war, uh, not a civil war, a war of secession. A secession war, like in uh, with South Carolina in 1861. And they won the war, so Belgium became an independent country, and they were able to annex Western Luxembourg, which became a province of Belgium, which it remains today. Eastern Luxembourg, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, remained under the rule of the King of the Netherlands until he died, and then his daughter could not be a ruler there because they didn't allow women to be rulers. And the same thing happened like in Hanover in 1890. In 1890, Luxembourg became a totally independent country with their own Grand Duke because the King of the Netherlands was not allowed to rule it. All right, you say, oh, it's complicated. It's a little bit complicated. All right, that brings us up to 1870, 1866. See Prussia and Austria. Prussia's big and Austria's big. But who in the world ever heard of sharing anything? You know, that would be smart. Let's share and then we can have one big, huge empire and who knows what we could do. No, that would take too much thinking. So no, instead of that, Prussia plotted against Austria because they wanted to kick them out of the Union so that they could rule the whole dang thing. So Prussia got this war co concocted with Austria because they knew Austria was weak because they knew Austria ain't never won a war in their whole history without any help. On their own, they always lost. Austria was like Remo in a casino. They always lost. So they got the war started and they beat them easily. And Austria was kicked out of that confederation and the whole confederation fell apart in 1866. So you could just take the red line and erase it off the map in 1866. But he didn't want to stay disunited. The rest of Europe could care less if they stayed disunited, frankly. And weak, didn't matter then. So um, Prussia got a war concocted with France. And their new emperor, Napoleon III. Uh, well, I guess it wasn't that new by 1870. He was he had been around for a good little while. But the new Napoleon, you know what I'm saying? The uh, second, actually, the, the second Napoleon to rule France, but they call him Napoleon the Third because of Napoleon the Second, who never actually ruled. But that's another story. All right. So Prussia knew they could beat France, 
So they, they wouldn't go to war unless they knew they could win. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to take a risk. If they can't win, they ain't going to war. Either they're going to win or they're not going to do it. It's like me when I gamble. If I gamble, that means I'm going to win because I don't gamble. So if somebody makes a bet with me, that means I'm going to win. Because if I, if I didn't think I was going to win, I wouldn't make the bet. So I tell people, you don't want to bet me because I'm going to win. I know the answer already, okay? I said, then you're going to try to welch and you're not going to pay. I just, I don't really want to take your money. So this country, Prussia, under their rule of Bismarck, got a war concocted with Denmark in 1864, and they won that easily. 1866 with Austria and won that easily. 1870 with France, well, that one was not so easy. That was hell, but... uh. They did win it, but it was a lot tougher than they actually had expected. But um, France, you know, France was no joke. So uh, after a few weeks, they were thinking, damn, you know, this country's not going to roll over like we thought. But anyway, France had a lot of internal problems, so they were able to defeat them. And plus, when Prussia got France to declare war and then baited them to declare war on them, they got all these other countries to help them fight uh, uh, the little states, Württemberg, Bavaria, Baden, and everybody else, all the Saxony and everybody. They had taken half of Saxony in 1866 in that other war, but uh, and, and they had annexed Hanover. But anyway, so they beat France, and then they got this other little thing concocted where they said, uh, oh, well, uh, Let's make a new German Empire because we used to have the Holy Roman Empire. So they said, oh, well, golly gee, let's make a new empire and we'll make the Prussian king the German emperor because you the strongest country over there in Berlin, the capital, right? That's uh, Prussia over here, and that's Brandenburg, Brandenburg, Prussia, but it's just called Kingdom of Prussia. So they said, uh, William the First, would you like to be the emperor? He said, yeah, I want to be the emperor of Germany. And Bismarck, his prime minister, chancellor, they say in German, they say chancellor in English, we say prime minister. He said, well, I can't really get you to be the emperor of Germany. Nobody's going to go along with that, but you could be the German emperor. He said, what is that? Well, they said, they don't want you to have too much power. It's going to seem like you're ruling over them, the other states. And we want it to be a federation where all the states are still independent inside of the empire. Like somebody was saying earlier, like with the Commonwealth, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, England, uh, the Bahamas, Jamaica, all of those have Queen Elizabeth as the queen, but they're all independent and do their own thing uh, within certain guidelines. So uh, he said, uh, oh, no, I want to be the king, the emperor of Germany. And uh, Bismarck said, well, German emperor is the best I can do. So I guess you could take it or leave it. I don't know what to tell you. So he said, this is trash. You know, he was really angry. He said, I, I don't want this garbage crown, you know, but he said, well, you could just be the king of Prussia then, you know, basically is what he was telling him. He said, okay, I'll take it, but I don't like it. So they agreed, power sharing, what you call that. So in 1871, early 1871, they, all the German states agreed when they were in occupied France, because they had occupied France, Northern France at least, to declare William Wilhelm, right? William as German emperor, not, but never, he could never call himself emperor of Germany, German emperor, okay? And so they set up this new country. Here's the map. Wow, that's too large. Look at all those little states. So it's the same states. There in blue is, is uh, like, you know, Bavaria, right? Bavaria, but all its counties. Now those See that? That's the counties. Like we have counties in America, right? Or in Louisiana, we have parishes. Germersheim, Berg, Zabern, Permassens, Zweibrücken, 
Hamburg, you know, and so on, little counties, you understand. But the whole kingdom was all that blue, kingdom of Bavaria. And then they got some territories inside of Bavaria that are ruled by other states. And these territories might be like what I'm pointing out. It might be the size of like a neighborhood. Like if you live in a town of a subdivision, that tiny. Mm -hmm. That's how mixed up this empire was. See, I got these. It looks like a jigsaw puzzle, does it not? All these little Thuringian states. And then there's Saxony, which had its own king. And it's got its own counties, you see. And then there's another little state. But look at the state. It's got a little piece here, 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 a little piece here. Uh, and then you got this one here. And it's in, look at all the little pieces. Can you imagine trying to live in a country like this? All right. Um, and this, now you got these independent cities, these self governing cities. So now you also had, there's another one. And you also had, uh, now Prussia is so big, it's in gray. Look how big Prussia is. Now, this area in orange was ruled by the whole empire. That's Alsace and Lorraine. Or Lothringen. That was a territory that was between France and Germany that they fought over up until 1944. They kept fighting over it because they both claimed it. That goes back to Charlemagne when he died in, what, 814? But, uh, but anyway... And they were fighting over the middle area. Birkenfeld. So look at all these little, uh, and there's another little state. Look at these tiny, talking about you, you could almost shoot a gun across it. <sighs> and that's a that's a part of a state. Look at this. Look at these little people. Now these are those independent cities, Lubeck, Bremen, and they have their own city government. They're what we call city states. You understand, it would be like if New York City was its own own state, and then if New Orleans was its own state with its own president and whatnot. There's Mamel. Wait, that's how far Germany stretched, all the way to Russia. Mamel, go look at a map today. That's way out there in, in, in Lithuania. And they had counties all the way, German people living all the way out there. There's the Imperial Eagle with the crown. So that's the second right. And that's, that's what they're showing the map. Ost Prussian, Eastern Prussia, West Prussian, right? Pomerania, Pomeran, Pomerania, which used to be ruled by Denmark at one time. Posen, Mecklenburg Strelitz, Mecklenburg Schwerin, Schwerin, two Mecklenburgs. And then um, Silesia. Schlesien. And there and then there down there is Austria. Right? So that's Bohemia, which today is the Czech Republic, and Moravia, part of the Czech Republic. Okay, so that was the German Empire that was established in 1871. And you see how big it was. Stretch from Russia in the east all the way to France in the west. So it was a huge country, much bigger than today. You know, now, see where I'm showing you right there? See where that line is there, where I'm doing the cursor? That's where Germany ends today. But the real Germany used to stretch in all of the eastern territories of the Kingdom of Prussia. Deutsches Reich, that means German Empire Nation, Verwaltungsgliederung, I guess that means it's a configuration of Janu 1st January 1900, the last year of the 19th century. So that's very interesting, is it not? Now, uh, well, of course, you know, there, <laughs> what do Mormons believe about the afterlife? Their uh, attitude was, um, now remember their, their, their prime minister, Bismarck, his attitude was never fight a war that you don't know you can win. You don't fight a war unless you know you're going to win it automatically. So, but he got old, you know, very old, and he was kicked out 
or forced out of office because in 1891 or 90, he told the new emperor, William II, he said, you know, if you don't like what I'm doing, I could just resign. And he said, oh, yeah, you could do that. <laughs> he didn't know what to do, so he quit. All right. And so then the new emperor, William II, who was the grandson, by the way, of Queen Victoria, he was not necessarily as uh, savvy as Bismarck. And so he he got this idea that, oh, you, oh, you could fight a war even if you don't know the outcome. You could be a risk taker. And we know how that worked out. It ended in a fiasco in 1914. So in 1914, the, the second German empire nation, the, uh, the one ruled by the Prussian dynasty, the Hohenzollerns, decided to go get involved in a war that they didn't know what the outcome would be. And they thought, well, uh, it might work out. <laughs> Um, but as we know, it certainly did not work out, and it was a total disaster. And then, so the German Empire was destroyed in 1918. The emperor re, uh, abdicated, I was about to say resigned. See, if I quit my job, they say he resigned. But if you're a, a ruler, you abdicate. It's a fancy word for resign. And he fled to the kingdom of Holland, the Netherlands, where they protected him, and he lived until 1941 when he died. Uh, the new German government, the Republic, the German Federal Federal Republic, which was established in 1919, has been in business, has been in business uh, for 122 years. They said, uh, they had the same policy. When the new government took over in 1933, they had a new set of rulers this kind of like fanatical party, the National Socialist German Workers Party, they had the same idea like, a, well, um, we could fight a war even if we don't know how it's going to work out. We're risk takers. Let's see what happens. Well, same result, fiasco. So Bismarck's attitude was you never fight a war if you don't know you can win. <laughs> and the, the new, the, the later rulers they were willing to take ridiculous risks and it didn't work out too well for them and a lot of other people. So it ended in a disaster. Well, let's look at the comments. Anyway, that was very interesting, at least for me. You might have hated it, but uh, okay. So uh, what is my opinion of marijuana? It's a psychedelic drug. I don't take marijuana. I never smoked marijuana in my life, and I have no interest in marijuana or any other psychedelic drug, but I don't believe that there should be any federal drug laws aside from customs laws. You know, customs is an importation because the U.S. government is supposed to control import, imports and exports. Um, so you, you would have to go along with that. But uh, But I don't think any state should outlaw it. No, I don't think states should outlaw marijuana or any, any other drug. I think all all drugs, heroin, marijuana, cocaine, crack, you know, cocaine, uh, whatever you call it, uh, whatever these drugs are, lysergic acid, diethylamide, methamphetamine, they should, let them all be legal. But that's for each state to decide, not me. I don't, I don't run every state. I believe in a federal republic, not this unitary crackpot government we got. Okay. Let's, uh, this is a serious hangout, not an idiot. What do Mormons believe about the afterlife? Well, that's religious question. This is history, government, politics, and geography, so it wouldn't be an apropos question, although I'm not opposed to talking about it. Next time, y'all, we're going to go to the planet Kolob. All right. In Baton Rouge, is there strict gun laws? Uh... Not that I'm aware of. The aviation wrote, writes something in some other language, which I don't understand. 
How much longer until the pendulum swings back to the right? It is extremely left currently. If it goes much further, we will be overcome by fascism. Well, probably more like communism than fascism, I'm afraid. Not to say I would want fascism either, but uh, because fascism is more of a right wing type of socialism. But we're dealing with more of a left wing socialism, you understand? Um, I don't know. Who knows? I couldn't say. I'm not a prophet. Hopefully not too much longer, but we'll see. I'm not very interested in 1800s German maps. How about some Louisiana history lesson? Well, I could do that one day. Wouldn't have time today. Now, Gary says, why? I guess he's asking the neck, the above person, why are you not interested? I'm surprised the World War II allies let Germany keep all the land they have today. Well, now remember the allies, quote unquote, were not really allies. You had the Soviet Union teamed up with Great Britain and the United States Axis, you know, the U.S. British Axis that had been in place since the 1820s. And they their attitude was, we're going to run this this show, meaning the world. And the Soviet Union said, no, we'd like to run it, actually. So um, they just had a common enemy, Germany. But they were not true allies by any stretch of the imagination. So once they defeated Germany, the whole plot was, well, we'll use the Germans against the other side. And if you remember Churchill, Churchill was telling the uh, Eisenhower and uh, Roosevelt, let's, you know, in 1944, hey, Germany still has millions of troops in their army, thousands of tanks, jet airplanes, V-2 rockets which no one else has guided missiles of any sort and uh, or any practical usage. And Churchill was saying, like, maybe, uh, you know, maybe we could, uh, you know, like uh, kind of make a deal with them and uh, kind of go against somebody over there to the east. You know what I mean? And Roosevelt was saying, nah, I don't want to fight the Soviet Union. But um yeah, so that, that was sort of like a wedge that they kept Germany as a wedge, you know. All right, uh, were the divisions within the German group based on history tribes or more politically divided? It's a good question. Well, it's a, it's a combination of history, tribes, and politics. Hold on. The feudal system, if you want. Well, now you see when the when the Roman Empire collapsed in 476, but it was collapsing already, and it did kind of continue on after 476 in the east. The eastern Roman, the eastern half of the Roman Empire continued on for another until 1453 when it finally was extinguished by the uh, Muslim invaders. But um, but the Western Roman Empire, because remember they divided the Roman Empire into two parts to make it easier to rule. In 395, they divided it into the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Empire. So they had two capitals, Rome, I think it was Ravenna. They made a new capital, Ravenna. And then the East was Constantinople, named after the Emperor Constantine. So it was still the same empire. That was the theory. It was two, two parts. So you had two emperors, the Western Emperor and the Eastern. The West spoke Latin. The East spoke Greek. The Western was Roman Catholic. The East was Eastern Orthodox. And that's why today you still have that split in Europe. And Ukraine is split down the middle. You have Western Ukraine, which is uh, Latin, alphabet, Roman Catholic, and oriented toward the West. That's why when Germany uh, entered the country in 1941, they all were pro-German and teamed up with Germany. But when the German army got to Eastern uh, Ukraine, that's when the real trouble started because those are all Russian they use the, the Cyrillic alphabet. They speak Russian and they are pro-Moscow. So that's when they start fighting back really hard. So, um, you had that. But, uh, so, but the, uh, Germany was a collection of tribes. 
they all spoke German of various dialects, of course, but they were all tri uh, tribes, just like the Hebrew tribes. They're all Hebrews, but they had different uh, dialects and all of that. But uh, but they could they could understand each other a little bit, but uh, to a good extent. But um, so then you had remember it was Europe was in like the dark ages, like chaos and a lot of confusion diffusion and confusion from 476 until like uh 776 so for about 300 years chaos but there was a frankish ruler who came to the prominence came to prominence that was uh pepin right that was the father of uh charlemagne and so he he was able to defeat a lot of other tribes and team up with the pope and bring some order and um organization to Europe and the Pope really appreciated his help. So uh, they crowned him the new emperor of the Romans, the new Roman emperor, basically the emperor of the Romans. And so um, now remember the feudal system, you would give fiefs, that's land to various local rulers that would help you rule, it's like a, a power sharing. So Germany had all these different local rulers and so uh, Charlemagne say, you could have this, you could have that, you could have this, you could have that, as long as you help me out. And so over the over the years, we talk about hundreds of years, 776, so we talk 876, 976, 1076, 1176, 1276, 1376, 1476, 1476, 1576, 1576, 1776, 1876. See what I mean? They have a, all, a lot of these places are ruled by hereditary arrangements so when this one dies it can't go to that so they divide it up here and they make a deal and uh so then you had that that jigsaw puzzle map and you had uh feudalism and you had religious you had a lot of these a lot of these territories ruled by bishops called bishoprics bishops ruled by literally catholic bishops so um and what else you said uh yeah, so and then you had so Germany was a very weak internally divided country and you had to pay tariffs like literally you might deliver bread 20 miles away and you got to pay taxes to deliver the bread down the street. So that's why they wanted to unite the country and make a united German empire nation, which is what they finally did in 1871. Mhm. Mm well, it's an interesting story, Gary. Not much of a Q&A when you ignore everyone and just read names off a German map. You're right, but I asked people for questions and I got no questions, so I did my, I answered my own question. Makes sense, right? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right, Turkey lost the entire Ottoman Empire in World War One. The Germans ran their military and screwed them. Yeah, you know, they needed allies, and so they got Turkey to team up with them. The Ottoman Empire, like the weakest country in Europe, it really helped them out. No, wrong, didn't help them at all. It bought them a little time. It didn't do them much good. Going back to you, you could have asked a question, but you didn't bother. But you maybe you weren't watching. I didn't want to have a bunch of dead air. And plus, I was thinking about doing 150th anniversary of the German Empire anyway. So there you go. In 100 years, I don't know. Might be smaller. Might be bigger. You're a Habsburg. Oh, that's interesting. Uh -huh. Easy living. Well played, Uriah Creep. Easy living. Yeah, I know. I get it. Northern Maine, Acadian, same as Louisiana. Yep, that's right. Hey, Jay, how's your Sunday going? Quiet, calm, relaxed, nice, for the most part. Woo, let's go back to these questions. The one in Van Nuys, that's part of Los Angeles. Yeah, okay, good. 
Well, what I like to visit most, Spain and North Africa, Spanish North Africa, but that got wrecked by the scamdemic. Only parties I went to in the 70s were birthday parties for little kids. Black Sabbath and Uriah Heep. Okay. <laughs> well, I was seven. So I, my, my main interest in the 70s was when the land of the lost was starting. Bring back Konigsberg. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Don't step on the ground. Okay. Well, let's see. The Austro-Hungarian, the Empire of Austria and Hungary was huge. They had no overseas territories because they could barely run. They could barely run their own empire. Um, it had stretched from Russia in the east down to uh, Italy in the west, Turkey in the south, Ottoman Empire in the south, and uh, the German Empire, Second Reich in the north. So it was big, big, spread out, disunited. They spoke of all these different. They were all white, of course, same race, white race, but they uh, spoke a, a, a multitude of languages. They had the Eastern Orthodox in the East and the Catholic in the West, and they didn't like each other. And um, then you had Muslims down in Bosnia, Herzegovina. Yeah, that 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 was a, a, you said, wait a minute, you said diversity makes us stronger. No, I never said diversity makes us stronger. They said it on CBS television. Ask the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Austro-Hungarian Empire, if diversity makes us stronger because it, it made them weak and they split apart. They had no common language. They had no common loyalty. They had no common family. It was a, it was a, it was a, a puzzle, a, a, a jigsaw puzzle, and it collapsed rather easily. USA all day. Okay. Who was the president of the South before the Civil War? Now, are you talking about the southern states in 1861? Well, there was no president because the Confederate States of America wasn't started until 1861. And there was only one president, and, and uh, <laughs> Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis was the president from 1861 to 1865. Louisiana Potter. Well, you could do that. I, I don't know anything about marijuana, so how could I review it? What do you mean a strong opinion? It is a psychedelic drug. I just said it. Should, I, I would. I would say every state should legalize it. I don't say it. People should smoke it. No, I haven't read that book, Matthew. So you agree on my drug statement? Well, thank you. Yes, I've heard of the Unabomber. I heard of the Unabomber when they were trying to catch the guy. Right. Roosevelt at Malta? You mean Yalta, not Malta. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, these guys are a bunch of arch conspirators, you know, Roosevelt, Churchill, Stalin, you got, well, it's like these mafia movies, you know, those three guys, it's kind of like when uh, they, these mafia heads have a meeting and they plot against each other while they, they're talking about what they're going to do. They're all plotting against each other. Yeah, you know, that was, uh, what do you expect? The Habsburgs were the last remnants of the Holy Roman Empire fighting for consolidation after Protestantism divided Europe. That's right. And uh, an interesting fact, most people don't know this, an interesting fact is that the, the Austro-Hungarian Emperor, Francis Joseph II, Habsburg, was the last ruler of Europe until 1918 when he, oh, I'm sorry, he died in 1916. Well, the last ruler was Charles I, sorry, Carl. Carl would have been him. The last ruler to have the veto of a pope. In other words, these guys could veto a pope. You say, what do you mean, veto a pope? What does that mean? Well, what I mean is if the College of Cardinals elected a pope and the Austrian emperor didn't like the choice, he could veto it. And that goes back to a compromise they had made back in the Middle Ages during the uh, 
crisis over the uh, well with the um, Guelphs and Ghibellines. But um, yes, that's a fact. The Austro-Hungarian emperor, the Habsburgs, was the last rulers of Europe that could veto the choice of a pope. And they actually did it once. Um, Francis Joseph vetoed a choice of a pope. Yes, that's true. Thoughts on leaving Afghanistan? Well, it's a good idea to get out of Afghanistan and Iraq. That was buying fool's gold to start with. They should have never attacked Iraq. And the invasion of Afghanistan in October 19, uh, 19 2001, I knew that was going to be a fiasco when it happened. I said, oh, well. Uh, when that happened, of course, the U.S. and the allies, the tag-along allies of NATO, defeated the Taliban rather easily. I said, well, all the people said, look, they're on the run. They're on the run. I said, what kind of military does the Taliban have? That would be like if the whole NATO attacked the uh, Atlanta City Police Department. So they ran into the hills. I said, all they're going to do is run into the mountains and hide. And they'll probably have support from other countries. I didn't say China and Russia. Didn't have to. But, uh, and they'll just keep fighting from the hills and the mountains. And uh, they'll probably win eventually. And the Americans will get tired and they'll leave. Just like in Vietnam. So the Taliban, they can win this waiting game. They say, well, we just wait around. And then uh, eventually these Americans will leave. They'll get tired and they leave. And so I guess they should have never gone in there, you know. In 1979, you say 1979? Yeah, you heard what I said. The U.S. should have never gone in there in 1979. And if you know anything about history, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Do I think any large-scale war like World War II in the future will be with... Oh, I doubt that. I don't think they'll have one. It seems like everyone is scared to start a real war because nukes leak. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, we don't need any more world wars. We didn't need the first two. Those could have been avoided. We sure don't need this, a third one. Whiskey and Coke. Okay. Crown Royal cans. Okay. Four pack. Okay. Okay. I guess everybody's getting tired now. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, you're welcome. Somebody didn't like it. Um, one of the uh, people using the alias name didn't like me showing the German maps. I'm sorry. I asked for questions and I didn't get any. And I, want, I wanted to talk about the uh, German Empire anyway, 150th anniversary. Oh, that's a good choice. I've heard of Daniel Boone. You too, Tommy. You too. Now look at this comment. The Unabomber was a part of the Harvard LSD experiment. I've never heard that, but it wouldn't shock me. Jeff, Jeff, hell, Jefferson Airplane was Jeff. You heard of that rock band? You know, rock and roll music. Jefferson Airplane was part of a, a CIA experiment. They admitted it. The European Union was trash when it got started it with uh, Benelux in the late 40s. So, yeah, if it died out, I wouldn't be shedding any tears. Budweiser. The Emperor of Oxford, Oxblood Fort, I guess I would pick Thomas Metal. But would he show up to rule? Bud Heavy, yeah, Budweiser. I have to agree, says Simon Smith. In hindsight, it was a huge mistake. Very glad that my brother-in-law is still alive. He's disabled but alive after an IED attack. Yeah, it's terrible. I feel terrible for the veterans who got injured and killed in these, in the invasion of Iraq in, in 2003 and the, the invasion of Afghanistan in 2001. People are ignorant in a way. They'll say, you don't support the veterans because you don't support the war. I say, are you that dumb? 
I don't support the war. That's why I support the veterans. I don't want them to get killed in the war. So how am I anti-veteran? You know, think about this child's mentality. And I'm, I'm serious about that. It's a child's mentality. All right, look at this. I oppose the war that will get the veterans injured, disabled, and killed, right? Which means that I'm anti-veteran because I oppose the war. Now, I don't know about you, but I think logic should play a role in all of this, right? But the people that support the veterans, they claim, support the attacks and the ridiculous wars that get the veterans wounded, disabled, and killed. So I'm the, I'm the guy that doesn't support the veterans because I'm trying to keep them from getting wounded, disabled, and killed. So uh, now, you know, chew on that. That's the kind of mentality I've had to deal with for over 20 years, you know. And I never back down. I never back down with any of these people. What am I drinking now? Water. One of my favorite drinks. I've reviewed Guinness so many times. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I have so many Guinness reviews. It's a great beer. MK Ultra was real and started in 1945 as the last ditch German effort. Well. Well, yeah, it was real, but what are you talking about? German effort. Okay. Um, Four loco flavor? Uh, none of them. I don't like any Four loco, but I've reviewed them. They're they're well made. They're actually very well made. I just don't like what I don't like what they are. My comment was clear. Okay, let's try to work this out. We we about to go off the air. My comment was to clear my comment towards Josh. I'm an LSD advocate, but not under those circumstances. Same as I agree with what Jay is saying now. Okay, so you support live surgic acid acid diethylamide. Okay, with such watered down history, I learned nothing in secondary or college. How can our society get people to learn history? It's hard. It's hard to get people to read history. They want to read novels, you know. They want to read about people with swords and uh, elves and uh, magic and all this useless stuff. You say, well, you read comic books. Yeah, I did, but they were short. It took 20 minutes to read a whole comic book. If that That's if it was going slow. And I don't read them anymore. I gave it up because it. It was no longer comic, comic books. It was socialism books. And I don't need to read that. Logic seems to be hard to find nowadays. I agree with that. Okay, that sounds like a bad situation. Oh, that, oh, you're talking about the 1619 Project? Do I support or disagree with it? You know I disagree with it 100%. <laughs> Why does everyone always act like a certain president or party will ruin the U.S. when they said the same thing 50 years ago. I don't think one a one-term president can ruin the country. Oh, they can. You can get some bad one-term presidents that can do a lot of damage. Let's think of some. Oh, let me think. Uh, Woodrow Wilson. Mm, yeah, World War One. That's a lot of damage. Uh, let me think. Well, he was a two-term president, so I guess you're right. Um, Okay, never mind. You said one-term president. I was just thinking of bad presidents in general that did a lot of damage. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say Roosevelt. He was a four-term president. War should never be far for profit, but only for conquest. And nowadays, we don't need further expansion. We don't need it. We didn't need it to start with. All right. Water. Good choice. Brandon Burrill. Thank you, Clint, uh, Chance. I appreciate that. I appreciate your support. I love, love you, beer user. I love these history question and answer also. I love doing them too. I love talking about history. When I used to teach history, students, a student told me one time, you love talking about this. I said, yeah, and I get paid to do it. I told him, I said, that's easy money when you get paid to talk about what you'd be talking about anyway at your house. He said, I can't argue with that. I said, exactly. No, I don't play video games. The U.S. got in the Vietnam War and started by a false flag in 65, no, 64. Yeah, 1964. Yeah, the uh, Gulf of Tonkin thing. Yeah, that was a joke. A bad joke, but it was still a joke. Yeah, I think a good it's a good idea to learn a second language. I don't know any, but Mandarin. 
Yeah, I saw that. Italy had the fastest man alive. No, I never heard of Thought 2 videos. Man, I'm so caught up in watching all these whiskey and beer reviews. I don't watch anything else, I swear. People send me unsolicited videos all the time, and I never watch them. And they still send them, and then I never watch them. And then they still send them, and I never watch them. And then they still send them, and I never watch them. Same old story. Oh, well. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, anyway, um, I think my nose is big. It ain't small. Anyway, uh, thank you all for the questions. I'm glad we got to talk about the German Empire's 150th anniversary, but the empire didn't last too long, did it? 81, 91, 2000, uh, 1901, 11. So what, it lasted 48 years? That's a bad run. Uh I just thought it was interesting. That's all. And and people that don't like what I do on content, I got a great solution for it. You can make your own channel and we might watch it. So that's a great bargain, really. Oh, so he's an Italian. He's an immigrant to Italy. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I, I did a video about that war. That was a that was a tra that was a bad war. Well, they're all bad. That was a bad one. I, I mean, I, I make a big long argument of why that U.S. should have not been in that war. I made a great argument, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. Now, the baseball game is about to start, everybody. Y'all go watch the baseball game on Entertainment Socialism Propaganda Network. Entertainment Socialism Propaganda Network.